Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's talk about how field day went. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Before we jump into today's video, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. All right, so if you didn't see my video that released last Saturday, I packed for field day in roughly 35 minutes this year. It was uh, kind of the field day challenge for the year. I like to come up with a challenge each year. This one sort of presented itself. I uh, wasn't even certain if I was going to get to work field day. Fortunately, uh, the day job allowed me to work both Saturday and Sunday. Now, it was a bit different this year as my club elected to only work in the field on Saturday for field day, and then most of the operators went home and worked their home stations on Sunday. I elected to not work from home on Sunday, but went and visited with another club uh, on Sunday. So I did uh, Saturday with one club and Sunday with another. But I gotta say, all in all, uh, everything went extremely smooth this year. I uh, did not, uh, I didn't see anything major or minor that I left out of packing uh, when I was rushed and only given myself, well, I, I started out with less than an hour and wound up only taking 35 minutes, but I didn't find anything major uh, in fact, I didn't find anything minor that was left out of the bag. So I got to say that all in all, that part of it was a huge success. Now let's go ahead and talk about uh, the battery. If you guys don't know, I run a Dakota Lithium 10 amp hour lithium battery. And then I run a 30 watt solar panel. Uh, this time around, I did not even charge the battery before I left out, uh, you know, the day before field day or anything like that. I think I had charged that after my last outing, but honestly, I couldn't remember. So when I got to field day, I went ahead. That was the first thing I did is I pulled the battery and the solar panel out of the bag and I plugged those up. The downside was it was a completely overcast day, so I wasn't gaining a whole lot of uh, energy from the solar panel, but I was going to take everything I could get. Now, I didn't even bother hooking up my What's Up meter uh, during field day because I had no clue what state the battery was in, and you really need to know uh, what state your battery is in when you start so that you can use the What's Up meter to calculate things out. So I'm not real sure uh, where the battery level remained through the day. Uh, two things I do know. It never got to full charge as indicated by the uh, charge controller because I get a solid green light when I get a full charge. And it never went dead because, well, the radio never stopped working. So I got to call that a success. So while I was uh, poking around and setting up the primary station, I did go ahead and uh, activate the station from the Jeep and put a horizontal piece of wire on the back of my Tar Heel and made a quick wind link connection. And then I went ahead and turned on JS8 call and just kind of left it running. I put a tweet out so if anybody wanted to make a contact ahead of field day, they knew my station was up and running. And I just kind of left those sitting there doing their thing while I went ahead and got the main station up and running. Now, here's something interesting that I ran into uh, with my primary station. I hooked everything up, got everything turned on, everything was working. Uh, my GPS was working, I had my grid square and conky, everything was golden. I guess maybe 10 or 15 minutes later, I realized I didn't put my external thumb drive in the pie. It was still laying there in the Ziploc bag uh, by the radio. So I pulled that out and I went ahead and put it in the back of the pie. I looked over a couple of minutes later and realized the GPS was no longer working. I couldn't see a grid square in uh, Conkey. I went ahead and tried to run a couple of manual commands to see if I could figure out what was going on. Nothing I did seemed to work, and I still don't know exactly what's going on. 
I did take and unplug the USB drive, the external uh, little thumb drive, and rebooted the Pi. Once it rebooted, it took it a couple of minutes to maybe three minutes, the GPS started working again. Okay, it was a fluke. I put the thumb drive back in, the GPS quit working. Again, I'm still not sure what's going on. So I ended up taking the thumb drive out, rebooted, and this time I just put the external thumb drive back in the Ziploc bag and left it. I never had another minute's problem out of my GPS unit. But I just want to throw this out there because I know from time to time I get emails with people having uh, odd issues with the GPS. I honestly have no idea what's going on with this. I was able to uh, repeat the issue uh, again and again once I got back home Monday morning. So I need to try to dig into that a little bit later this week and see if I can figure out exactly what's causing that to happen. Uh, but that was really the only uh, issue that I had through the entire weekend for field day. Now, most of uh, the entire weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, I worked JS8 call and I made several Winlink connections. Uh, I did, I think I worked like six, eight, ten voice contacts on 40 meters uh, just to kind of play with an antenna. And that's another point that I wanted to bring up. I was running a prototype antenna. Uh, I don't want to say a whole lot about the antenna at this point, uh, but I did have good luck with it uh, over the weekend. It's a 49 to 1, and it was good 10 through 40 meters with no tuner. I mainly tested it on 40 meters, and uh, I had it in an inverted V configuration, and it went extremely well. Now guys, I am going to leave a link maybe across the screen right here, definitely down in the description below. Uh, every year I write a full-blown after action report for field day. I think this year it's roughly um, five pages long. So if you guys would like to read that, I will leave a link down in the description below so that you can get uh, kind of the entire story. But all in all, things went extremely well. I never make the most amount of contacts. In fact, I probably placed dead last if uh, we just counted contacts inside our club. Field day to me is not about making contacts. It's more about challenging yourself and doing things that maybe you haven't done in the past. Uh, so this time I wanted to see how quickly I could pack for field day. I wanted to try out that in-fed half-wave antenna that I had put together and see if it was maybe a viable option for future uh, field deployments. So I like to experiment uh, instead of really worrying about how many contacts I made. My main thing is will the antenna communicate and will it communicate uh, the way I expected? So, and what I mean by that is this time I put it in an inverted V and the best signal reports I was getting with JS8 call was all from the southeast, which is what I would expect being in an NVIS configuration. I didn't hear California on that antenna. Now, maybe uh, around gray line as the sunset, maybe I could have gotten out and reached into California with that configuration. But uh, mainly what I was expecting was NVIS. I did work several uh, stations up and down the East Coast with varying signal reports, but primarily I was getting the best reports right here in the Southeast within about six or 700 miles of my location. All right, guys, well, that's uh, what happened with me on field day. I hope you guys had a great weekend as well, and we will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.